This year marks the 50th anniversary of the first national broadcasting of the children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I never thought of wearing it like that. That's pretty good. It's hard to balance it. Fred Rogers, the creator and host of this program, became a nurturing staple in the childhoods of generations of children with his warm, calming voice and his earnest expressions of caring, sharing, and emotional well-being. I like being with you. Today I have a book and a box. Mr. Rogers had a tremendously deep understanding of the psychological and social struggles of young people. It's easy for adults to forget how scary it can be to be a child, but Mr. Rogers remembered. He knew that childhood fears were not just about monsters under the bed or in the closet, but also about mundane, everyday experiences like getting a haircut or going to school for the first time. I personally watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood almost every day when I was a child. He was as much a part of my world and my life as my grandparents or my dog or my Legos. I was too small to really understand that his words were teaching me and nurturing me in a, in a really big way, but looking back, it's impossible to overstate just how deeply his simple little show influenced my way of thinking and, and my worldview. We always have things to talk about, don't we? Throughout his long career, Mr. Rogers worked to make the world a better place. He, he had a view of pacifism and egalitarianism. He staunchly opposed the Vietnam War. He espoused feminist views on his show. He worked to end child hunger and, of course, above all, he fought for public funding for television programming. Although he was never overtly partisan and never called himself a leftist, he championed so many leftist causes that I can't help but consider him to be a comrade. In 1969, Fred Rogers famously appeared before the United States Senate to defend funding for the United States Public Broadcasting. The statement he made before the notoriously tough Senate subcommittee chairman, John O'Pastor, was the closest thing we have to a manifesto of Mr. Rogers. I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, you've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. And it was powerful enough for the impatient and brusque senator to react with uncharacteristic emotion. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. <clears throat> Looks like you just earned the $20 million. <laughs> Mr. Rogers had a strong and clear vision for how humans should interact with one another in society. His mantra, which he repeated over and over again to children and adults alike, was that you are special. You are my friend, you are special. You are my friend, you're special to me. You are the only one like you, like you my friend, I like you. This is one of those rare and wonderful ideas that's simultaneously as simple as can be and, and wonderfully complex. So let's take some time and unpack this idea. At face value, it seems almost contradictory to say that everyone is special. How can everyone be special? Doesn't the word special denote something that is rare and unique? Well, of course it does. And that was what Mr. Rogers realized about humanity. We are a species that is wonderfully vibrant and diverse. Mr. Rogers wanted this message to be available for all children, regardless of their background. He, he wanted every child to know that they were special, and that's why he was such a fervent activist for public broadcasting. He knew that if publicly funded television went away, then his message of kindness and caring would be lost, and children would be left to the devices of the for-profit television stations, with all of the violence and peddling of plastic toys and breakfast cereal that they're known for. Of course, Fred Rogers' ideas were intended just as much for adults as they were for children. Here was a man who made Joan Rivers, famous for her toughness and tenacity, cry on live television simply by telling her that she was indeed very special just the way she was. It's you, I like you. actually getting a little emotional myself uh, uh, just reading this script back to you. Uh, and why? why? Why is this simple idea that, that we are all special and that we should all care about each other and, and support each other so emotionally profound? Maybe it's because it's not a message we receive very much in, in our modern Western society. See, under capitalist ideology, we're trained from an early age to fight. Uh, we're told that competition is what breeds excellence and that winning is what matters and that success and value, our self-value, is rooted in material acquisition and, and the defeat of the competition. There's a million ways to get respect. 
There's only one way to get the kind of respect that's undeniable. The Los Angeles Lakers will go to the finals. The kind they can never take away from you. When. In this light, our neighbors are not seen as people to care about and nurture and enjoy, but rather as enemies, as competitors, as potential threats. Americans like to talk about our rugged individualism. As our history shows us, the ruggedness is shorthand for violence and opportunistic infighting and toxicity, while individualism simply stands for isolation and distrust for one another. This is reflected in much of the media we share with our children, which is so often rooted in violence and strife. And of course, all of this propensity for violence and socially disruptive competition becomes internalized. We become resentful and fearful of other people, which causes us to build up walls and lash out at one another in anger and in shame. Just look at the vitriolic zeal with which reactionaries like to label those they disagree with as special snowflakes. Our internalized hatred of ourselves has become so strong that it's become an insult to simply imply that a person might have self-value and self-worth and pride in themselves. It's so common to have these kinds of toxic attacks levied at one another, and yet it is so rare for us to hear about our own value from our friends and our neighbors. So rare indeed that we spend hours each day posting on social media trying to garner likes from one another in the hopes of having some kind of quantifiable validation of our own work. Would we be so obsessed with cultivating our online personalities and, and trying to get popularity online if there were more people like Mr. Rogers in our lives? People there to tell us that we are special just the way we are? You're special to me. You are the only one like you, like you, my friend, I like you. When I was in college, I took a class with a naturalist named Rudy Mankey, who also had a nationally syndicated public television program called Nature Scene. He therefore knew Mr. Rogers professionally, and they spoke on many occasions. Professor Mankey described Mr. Rogers as being almost creepy because he was so intent on genuinely listening to whoever he was talking to. It's funny how rare and, and disconcerting it can be for us to just listen to one another. I know I'm, I'm really guilty of this myself. I often find myself in conversations just waiting to speak instead of listening to what the other person has to say. But Mr. Rogers knew very well the importance of genuinely listening because it shows other people that we do care about them and, and it validates that the people in our lives are important and, and they deserve our attention. I could go on for hours and hours about Mr. Rogers. In my view, he, he was a radical, and he was one of the great thinkers and philosophers of the 20th century. He was unique in the way he put his ideas into practice and influenced countless lives with his television show and his political activism. You know, in 2003, when Mr. Rogers died, I, I was just a freshman in college. I was immature. I was, I was wrapped up in my own world, my first step into the adult world, to really notice the loss that the world had suffered and to really appreciate the loss that I was having. But today, when I look back 50 years after the first airing of the Neighborhood Program, I realize that Mr. Rogers was leading a quiet and a graceful revolution. And it's still being, um, I, don't, I don't want to say fought. It's not, that's not the word Mr. Rogers would have chosen. Um, but it's still being carried out today. It's a revolution of kindness, compassion, and caring that goes against the grain of American competitiveness and contempt. And it's my hope that those of us who grew up in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood have been able to hold his values close to our hearts, and I hope that we'll continue to share them with our neighbors and with the children in our lives. For me personally, my political ideology is grounded absolutely in the values and philosophies of Fred Rogers. The reason I want to build a society that is based on equality and mutual respect and support for one another is that I do believe that every person is special. I believe that every child deserves a chance to be nurtured, which must include a quality education, health care, and psychological protection, and social support. The most important thing is that we're able to be one-to-one, -one, you and I, with each other at the moment. If we can be present to the moment with the person that we happen to be with at the moment, that's what's important. I believe that every adult has problems and failures from time to time in our lives, and that in these difficult times, we deserve a hand up from our neighbors, not to be ignored with judgmental condemnation and scorn. I believe that society can advance only when people work together and come together, and never when we try to step over one another to advance our own positions in life. I believe that society should be a neighborhood where we all take joy in watching and helping each other grow. Mr. Rogers, wherever you are, I hope you realize how special you are and how special you were in my life. Uh, and for those of you who are watching this video, I hope you too realize 
that you are special just the way you are, just the way Mr. Rogers always said. That's all I've got for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm American Johnson. This is Non-Compete, and I'll see you next time, neighbors. I'll be thinking of you even when I'm not here.